Hi, and welcome to this tutorial video on how to manually issue end entity certificates with EGBCA. This is part of a series of video tutorials. Make sure to watch our other videos for more information on how to use EGBCA. To start in my EGBCA instance here, I will create a new certificate profile for my end intended usage. And there is a built-in server profile that I can use as a template to get good default values for my new profile that I will call TLS server profile. I'll then edit it to make some modifications. I will, for example, only allow elliptic curve keys and the curve uh, P256. Here, you can allow as many key algorithms and the key specifications as you want. The signature algorithm will use whatever the issuing CA is using. And as a validity time, I will allow these certificates to be valid for one year. I will add a expiration restriction that says that certificates can only expire on Tuesdays, Wednesdays and Thursdays. And that is so that we don't have expiring certificates close to the weekend. In the permissions section here, you can allow the requester of the certificate to override certain aspects of the profile that we're configuring here. By default, HBCA does not allow any overrides, so that means that the final certificate will be defined by this profile. Next, we have a X509 extension section, and here we include which extensions are added to the certificate. I will here, for example, remove the basic constraints that just says that this is an end entity certificate and not a CA certificate, as it most of the time is optional. For key usages, I need digital signature and key encipherment, and they are already added as part of this template I was using. And with extended key usage, I need server authentication, which again was already added by the template. If you're issuing certificates under a policy that can be added here by specifying an OID and optional user notice text or CPS URI, but I will not be using this. I want to have subject alternative name, but my CA does not have a, any alternative name, so I will remove the issuer alternative name extension. I do want validation to later on be possible, so I will add a CRL distribution point and use a CA defined CRL distribution point. So that is something that I have configured in my CA already. And same for authority information access, I will enable this and add a CA defined OCSP locator and CA defined issuer URI. So that is where OCSP services are available and where the issuing CA certificate can be retrieved from. And I have all of these URIs already configured in my CA settings, so I'm just saying this profile to use those predefined values. Finally, I'm going to disable the LDAP DN ordering of the DN attributes and use the standard X509 ordering instead, and sele select the available CA to be my PKI sub-CA. Same. Next, I need to create an end entity profile. And this is where I will be defining the information about the holder of a certificate that should be added to the certificate. I'll create the profile called TLS server profile and edit it. To start with here, I'm not going to be saving any email addresses for my servers, so I will disable the end entity email. And here in the subject DN attributes section, I will, in addition to the pre-configured common name, add a organization and country. Common name should be required and modifiable. So that means that it's uh, taken whenever a new request is made. And here we can optionally add validation with a regex if we want to restrict what values are allowed. I'm not going to use that. For organization, I want this to be required and not modifiable and use the fixed value of key factor 
community. Same for country, it will not be modifiable and use the fixed value of SE for Sweden. In the other subject attribute section, we can add subject alternative names. And here for a server TLS, I want a DNS name field to be added. And I will add one that is always the same as my common name field. So I will take this box here. And I will also add a number of optional extra DNS name fields if we want more than one DNS name um, in the certificate. And then I will map this profile to be used together with the TLS server certificate profile that I just created. I will restrict this profile to only be usable by my PKI sub CA. And the available token sections defines how key pair generation should be possible to be done for these certificates. User generated means that the requester generates their own key pair and creates a CSR, a certificate signing request to be sent to EGBCA. The other options here allow CA side key pair generation where the CA generates the private key and certificate and returns those to the requester as a single file in any of these formats. And here I will allow both user generated and the CA side key pair generation with the PEM file format. And then I will save and to test these profiles out I will go to the GBCA RA web and enroll making a new request since uh, I will be requesting this certificate for a new end entity not previously known to EGBCA. I'll select the certificate type to be my TLS uh, server profile and here I will do key pair generation provided by user so that means that I need to also create a CSR to upload here. To do that I have here created a simple conf file defining the information that I want to be added to my request. I've generated a elliptic curve key with OpenSSL using the prime 256v1 file curve which is the one I allowed in my profile and then I used OpenSSL rec to combine this key and the config to create a CSR in my certificate request. So I will now copy this and upload it to EGBCA. And we can he here see that EGBCA read the common name from the request. As the CA administrator, I can modify this, but I want this to be what the requester asked for. And we can also see here the optional DNS name fields if we want to add extra other than just the common name value test.my. PKI. I will register this user under the username identical to the common name, test.mypki. And finally, I will download the certificate together with CA certificates in a PEM chain. And if we open this uh, here, we can now see that I have my certificate and CA certificates in a file returned by EGBCA. So that's it, I've issued a TLS server certificate. Join us in our next video to see how to manage other aspects of a PKI with EGBCA. Thanks for watching.